Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to install the pistons, the rings, and as you can see I've got the engine flipped over right side up for the first time and I've also got the set of cylinders that I'm going to use. Now these obviously are not the ones that I took off the engine but this is a set that I had that are in perfect condition. Now I have not cleaned these up but the uh, the cylinder walls are in perfect condition. They need to be cleaned but there's no ridge. I'm going to hone those out, clean this up, get it painted and ready to install. And as you can see the engine is looking really good. It looks really nice right side up for a change. So I have the pistons ready to go and they're in the position that they have to be installed with the indicator in towards the back of the engine. And I have the rings laid out ready to install. And then of course I have that one piston installed already. I just have to put the rings on it. And one thing too is you have to make sure that your cam chain is out and ready. Again the magnet comes in handy. So the cam chain is on its gear and ready to go. I usually just kind of lay it towards the back. You know, it doesn't matter if it falls down there for now. You can always get it back out. But anyway, uh, so the next step is we're going to install the pistons and um, then the cylinders. So before you install the piston rings, it's good to refer to the shop manual because they explain how to check the gap on each one of the rings. And again, let me pull this out so there's no glare. Anyway, so you, you take each one of the piston rings and you slip it into the cylinder that that particular ring or rings is going to go into and then you check the gap with a feeler gauge. And the tolerances are right here. So I have uh, set one up as an example on my engine here. So this ring. Now I haven't cleaned this cylinder up yet but uh, I've got the ring set in there and you just put it down about an inch or so. Set the camera up here. And in my case I've got a nice snug Ten thousandths. So when I put my ten thousandths feeler gauge in there, it's a nice snug fit. So the uh, the range is anywhere from six thousandths to twelve thousandths, and mine is at ten thousandths. So that ring is good for that particular cylinder. 
and you want to do that to each and every one of the cylinders with the rings that are going to go in that particular cylinder. Now, when you, if you happen to get one, a ring that's a little bit too tight, like if it's just touching, then you just simply, you know, you, you just simply take a file and you file the end of the ring like that until you get it, until you get the gap to the tolerance gap. So once you've checked all your gaps uh, and gotten them adjusted properly, then again, refer to the shop manual and the shop manual will show you exactly which ring goes into which groove and in which direction. So those of you who do not have a shop manual, you can refer to this and then it'll explain to you which ring goes in and in which direction. And if you'll notice, they show the gaps are always at 120 degrees off from one another. You don't want all the gaps to line up. You want them to be off by 120 degrees all the way around as shown there. And then again, as I mentioned before, the indication on the piston that says in goes towards the back of the engine. So then what you want to do is you want to set your timing mark on the T for top dead center. Uh, T means top dead center for number one and number six cylinder. So what you can do is if you, if you start out at number, at setting it at T, then your number one and number six cylinder is at top dead center. And then you have, you know, a lot more room to work with to install the piston. So then you, once you've installed that, then you rotate the engine until the number three and four are at top dead center. And you just keep doing that. You just keep rotating the engine around until then you have number two and number five at top dead center. So it just makes it a lot easier to install the pistons that way. So you put the corrugated in first, then I always put the bottom ring in second, then, then the top one. And again, it's tricky because it's a tight fit. So then you have to work it all the way around. Just like that. Then you just make sure your gaps are offset and not stacked on top of one another. So then you take your second ring, which is the one without the chrome. You make sure that your top indicator is showing.
And these can be a bit tricky. You feel like you're going to break the ring, but you just kind of stretch it around. And there it is. And then same with the top ring, the chrome ring. And there they are. So again, make sure your gaps are offset from one another. And that's it for the rings. Then on the, on the wrist pin, I just put, kind of soak it with oil. Kind of get it all lubricated in there. Then I squirt some oil in the top of the rod. Actually, let's do it on this one. And there you go. Then you install the C clamp. And as I mentioned in another video, you know, I always put the, the gap on the C-clamp opposite the notch in the piston. And somebody asked me, well, why, why is that? And, you know, there's no real rule about that. But in my opinion, if it just eliminates any possibility whatsoever of this C-clamp coming out of the piston, not that it would, but, you know, you never know what's going on inside these motors. So I always do that. That's the way I've been trained to do it. And that's the way I've always done it. So and I've never had any problem with it. So um, that's just the way I do it and everybody you know, has their own methods. So, so as an example, I've got this C-clamp in there and you know, I just rotate it. And if you look, you know, there's the, right there is the end of the clip right there at that notch. So, you know, to me, 
it's much better to rotate that thing around so that the end of the C-clamp clip is way up here at the top and the notch is here. There's just no way that C-clamp's coming out of there. And by the way, uh, I always put one side of the seat clip in first on the piston. That way you don't run the chance or you cut your chances down of dropping the seat clip down inside the engine. Plus it's a lot easier you know, to do it on the one side and then you put the piston on the rod and put the wrist pin in and then you've only got one clip to put in while it's on the engine. Okay, so now I have all the pistons installed and all the rings installed and I have the engine set at, it's always good to kind of keep the engine set at top dead center, the T mark. Because it seems like everything you do from this point on requires that that setting, you know, that the engine be set at that. So anyway, as you see, all the new pistons are in, all the rings are in. Uh, I got the cam chain sitting there ready to uh, slip the cylinders on. And so now I will focus on the cylinders get those cleaned up and honed and painted and ready to install. Okay, so now I'm ready to hone out the cylinders. And I just, when, it, when the cylinders are in as good a condition as these are, where there's no ridge and there's no real rust corrosion or anything. There's a little surface rust there, but not a big deal. Uh, I just use uh, a cylinder honing attachment to the cordless drill, because you just want to do it lightly. You're just kind of breaking the glaze and cleaning the cylinder so that the rings will seat better on the pistons. So. Anyway, they sell these at any auto parts store. You can buy it, and uh, they do a great job. So the first thing you want to do is squirt a little WD-40 in, in the cylinder. And then the uh, stones are spring-loaded. And you want to go back and forth. You don't want to pull it out too far like I'm doing. <laughs> you just want to go back and forth because you want cross hatching marks on the cylinder. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's really all you need to do. You just need to break the glaze, get the any imperfections out of the surface of the cylinder, and you want to have those cross hatching marks like that.
Okay, so I've got all the cylinders honed out now, and as you can see, they're beautiful. This is how you want them to look, with the nice cross hatching on there from the stone. And now I can go and clean up, you know, the, uh, the rest of the head with the solvent. And then we'll be ready to install these. One important thing to do uh, is clean up all of your threads, especially where the head bolts bolt on to. So as you can see here, I'm, I uh, got a tap and die set and I'm going to clean up all of the threaded holes. Again, especially where the head bolts go. The other thing you want to do is clean up this leading edge right here. You'll see this beveled edge at the bottom of the cylinders. And that's beveled so that when the pistons go in, this kind of squeezes the piston rings in as you lower the cylinders down. So it's important to take sandpaper or a Scotch-Brite and make sure that's nice and smooth along there on every one of these. One super important thing you've got to remember is that each one of these cylinders has an O-ring that goes right there. And sometimes they're easy to pull out of there and sometimes they're not. Now in this particular one, it's not easy. So I've got it out of this one, but I'll show you this one here. I'm pretty much having to dig it out, as you can see there, with a with a pick and a and a a razor blade and a small screwdriver and everything so I I'm really having to work at it it's taking me quite a while to get these out of here but you have to remember to get those out of there because the gasket set has new ones as you can see here so don't forget those o-rings otherwise you will have a leak so now we're ready to install the cylinders, but a couple things you have to make sure you do before you start to do that is the part of the cam chain tensioner, this piece here, has a little rod that goes right here in that slot right there. Then the tensioner goes, you can see the little notch there. Tensioner goes down and hangs on that. Then you take this portion of the cam chain tensioner and reinstall it. And by the way, you want to clean this surface really well. You want to really get that nice and shiny with all of the old head gasket material off of there. So you want this to be perfectly clean and shiny so that the new head gasket uh, seats properly. And I have not painted these cylinders. They came really clean. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and install them. And then I'll paint them, of course, when I repaint the whole engine. So uh, anyway, that's, uh, we're pretty much ready to install the cylinders now. 
So what you want to do is you want to rotate the crankshaft so that the number two and number five piston are top dead center because when you lower the cylinder down these two pistons will you'll get those started first and then that'll help kind of support the cylinders while you then uh, you know install these remaining four pistons and you want to have your magnet ready also so that while you're putting the cylinder in you can grab a hold of the cam chain So the manual shows that Honda has a special ring compressor tool, which I do not have. But because of that bevel that's at the bottom of the cylinders, it's pretty easy to get the cylinder uh, to get the piston started. So basically, as you saw, I just kind of worked a little bit, pressed them with my fingers, and kind of wiggled the the piston and then they both went in there just fine. So uh, I got number two and number five started, and now I will lower the cylinders down and start the others. First, I rotate the engine. And so sometimes you may have to tap it just a little bit. And again, I put a little more WD-40 in the pistons that are started. So as you can see, I got the cylinders on there, turning the uh, crankshaft, and they move nice and smoothly. That's what you want. And I have my mark set on the T mark, which is top dead center, for number one and number six. So we're in good shape. One thing I had to do was I had to leave this cam chain adjuster kind of loose. The, uh, the nuts back here on the back but while the cylinders were going down, uh, this had to be loose because otherwise it hits the block down here and it'll hang you up. So just kind of leave that loose. And then once the cylinder is down and seated, then you can kind of tighten it up. But I wouldn't tighten it completely until you're ready to put the head on. So now we're ready to drop the head on. And the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure 
your two dowels, your dowel pins are in. There's one there and one over there. And then you want to drop the gasket on. And now you want to check to make sure your cam chain is hooked on to the gear on the crankshaft, which it is. You can see it turning there. So at this point, you want to make sure your cam chain stays up. So you put something across there to uh, kind of hold it up because now we're going to lower the head down and that chain needs to go up through the head. All right, so we got the head on, and it's all ready to uh, put the bolts on. And so it's getting a little late right now. So uh, I'm going to come back in the morning and do that. Meantime, if you'll notice, I have it strapped down. Because at this point, once now that you've got the head on and the cylinders and all that, the engine wants to go forward, tilt forward. So I've got it supported underneath and then I've got it tied in the front and in the back because as you well know California has earthquakes so my luck we'd have an earthquake overnight and this engine would end up down there <laughs> so, on. so uh well that's continue. gonna do it for this video but um I'm going to be posting another video within 24 hours showing uh, the installation of the cams and the cam chains and doing the valve timing and so on, uh, at which point we will be pretty close to being finished with putting this engine together. So um, stay tuned for that video. Like I said, I'll be posting that uh, within 24 hours. So thank you for watching, and I really appreciate it. Uh, hit the subscribe button and then the bell to get notifications. Uh, for future videos. Again, thanks for watching.